Hello learners, how are you? I believe all of you are healthy and happy. Well, I believe you are healthy and happy. <laughs> but the chapter that I am taking up today says that the planet is not healthy at all. The title of the chapter is The Ailing Planet. It is the fifth chapter from the main textbook of class 11th, Hornbill. Well, the entire title of the chapter is The Ailing Planet, The Green Movement's Role. And as visible in the picture, the planet is indeed ailing. It has become a patient. It has become ill. It is suffering. And the chapter also talks about the green movement and the role played by the green movement in teaching the entire human race as to how to live properly on the planet, how to live in a sustainable manner so that the planet can survive too. So in totality, the chapter is divided into two parts. One, the suffering of the planet. And the second, how to solve the problem of the suffering planet. So let's get started. The chapter is written by Nani Palkiwala. It's basically an article. And Nani Palkiwala, a very famous jurist and a brilliant writer. Nani Palkiwala, who was born in 1920 and he died in the year 2002, was a celebrated jurist and an economist of repute. He was from Mumbai and endeared himself to the people through his articulate analysis of the annual budget. Businessmen, teachers, economists and just common folks used to throng to the Brobon Stadium to listen to his brief. In the bar, he was an acclaimed expert in constitutional law and matters related to income tax. This essay reflects his commitment to the civic responsibilities of the people towards preservation of their endangered planet. The Indian Express newspaper carried this essay on November 24, 1994. And today we are in 2020. So the article, this essay, published in Indian Express in the previous century, it's been 26 years already, but it is still so relevant. The problems that are discussed in the chapter are still there and it is so bad. I mean, the situation has only worsened. And this is the most important part that even after 26 years, the situation remains the same. The topics dealt with in this chapter are still there, still so relevant. The planet is still suffering. It is still an ailing planet. And the green movement is still thriving, trying to improve the situation everywhere. So let's get to the synopsis of the chapter. The chapter is an article written by Nani Palkiwala and was published in the Indian Express on 24th November 1994. The issues raised in the article are relevant to this day and the main focus of the article is on the declining health of the planet Earth. The whole concept of coexistence is questioned and the issues of depletion of the environment are highlighted. This article gives various details about the Green Movement which played a major role in addressing this issue. It is very relevant and the topics discussed to show how the human race is dominating on Earth and has left no or little space for other species. The entire article is based on different committees framed for the betterment of the planet as a whole. The chapter comments on the deteriorating condition of our planet. It speaks of the problems faced by our planet, reasons for its poor condition and the changing view of the world for the planet. So the chapter talks about how the planet is suffering, what are the main reasons and yes human beings are obviously the main reason but it also talks about the green movement. The author begins by commenting on the great attention received by the green movement that began some 25 years ago so when the article was written in 1994 so you have to go back 25 years. The world's first nationwide Green Party was founded in New Zealand in the year 1972 and the movement has been a great success since then. So uh, today we are like we observe Earth Day. Even if you ask a child who is studying in third or fifth to prepare a poster regarding the uh, suffering of the planet, 
regarding ecosystem pollution tree plantation saving resources they know about it that what should be done how that needs to be done and why is it necessary so how even a child knows about it definitely green movement is responsible these topics are dealt with in books the textbooks on television it is on radio it is in newspaper it is on social media these topics are everywhere so even the child comes to know about it and we have to give the credit to the green movement for playing a major role in emphasizing these points and broadcasting it making aware everybody on the planet so when we are wasting electricity wasting water when we are using excessive amount of paper we know within that we are making mistakes carpool is always better we have to close the tap we know that green movement should be applauded for doing that so that is what it is being said here a change in the human perception a revolutionary change has come in perception of the human beings bringing in a holistic and ecological view of the world there has been a shift from the understanding developed by copernicus to the people's belief that earth is a living organism whose needs must be respected and preserved by us according to the writer our earth is like a patient in declining health thus we have to realize our ethical responsibility of guarding the planet because we belong to the planet we live on the planet we are the smartest beings on the planet it is our responsibility earth has enough to satisfy every man's needs but not every man's greed so we have to resort to the limited amount of things that we need not more than that and that is depicted through the idea of sustainable development the world commission on environment and development propagate the propagated the concept of sustainable development in 1987 sustainable development calls for a well balanced development so as to meet the demands of the present and not to deprive our future generations from the natural world of resources so why we have to go for carpooling because we have to save petrol diesel etc so that after 50 years our children can use that we have to preserve the trees so that after 80 years that generation could live properly we cannot snatch away make use of everything that is available we have to use it properly that is called sustainable development the chapter also deals with man and other species man has been considered as the most dangerous being on the planet however due to the efforts of a number of agencies all over the world man is learning to live in harmony with the other living species on the planet man's existence is shifting from the system of domination to that of partnership so we have learned our lesson at least a little bit of it that we are not like the monitor of the class or we are not the master of everybody else so that we can you know guide everyone inspire everyone and do whatever we wish but that's what we do actually you know we behave in a manner that the planet is prepared for us and only we can use it and the other species they have to adjust accordingly so if you ask any other species that what do you think about the behavior of the human beings then this is going to be the answers that they are such an invasive species they take away your space they take away your land they take away your home and they take away your life so we have to learn our lesson i believe the chapter also talks about the depletion of the four principal biological system according to mr lester r brown there are four principal biological systems which are fisheries forests grasslands and croplands the demand of the human beings on these systems is increasing to such an unsustainable extent that the productivity of these systems is being hampered the excessive demand result in deterioration and depletion of resources leading to the breakdown of fisheries disappearance of forests deterioration of croplands and turning of grasslands into barren lands 
so because we need everything we need fish to eat for protein we need forests we cut down the forest to prepare buildings helipads roads and we never take care of them we never plant more trees we are the ones because of whom croplands have disappeared grasslands are gone so four principal biological systems why they are depleting because of fulfilling the human needs only well then the chapter talks about deforestation which is a burning issue for years and years the forests are being destroyed in large proportions to obtain firewood in poor countries depletion of tropical forests has led to the extinction of extinction of several species in fact the tropical forests or the powerhouse of evolution are eroding at the rate of 40 to 50 million acres per year besides the increasing use of dung for burning deprives the soil of important natural fertilizers so deforestation is as i said a burning issue it's something so relevant today too we cut down trees in large proportion so that we can have urbanization development and the trees are gone and that is very sad and then the chapter talks about one of the most important factors that is overpopulation the earth cannot tolerate everybody we keep on growing keep on growing and we use the resources beyond the limit and that is not good for the planet that is not good for other species also so one of the major factors adding to the deforming future of the human society is the fast growing world population the present world population is estimated at 5.7 billion with this ever increasing population development seems a far fetched dream as per the author the best contraceptive to control the population is development and education also so if the people are educated they are financially stable they are developed socio economically i believe then yes you know they can take part in to controlling the population in a better manner then they will understand that we cannot put on so much load on the planet every child every new child in the world has his or her own set of needs and the planet cannot tolerate to have fulfilling needs of everybody so we have to control the world population so that the planet can live and breathe so in the end again the author talks about the era of responsibility which is the holistic view of the basis of our existence he points that it is an era of responsibility that calls for seeing the world as an integrated whole rather than a dissociated collection of parts so today i believe that you have understood we have understood that if we are causing problems creating pollution uh, snatching away the resources in our respective cities in our country then it is not going to harm only the country or only the city it is going to harm the entire planet if we are increasing the temperature then the species in antarctica are vanishing because of that and that is how the whole planet is interconnected what we are doing today here is harming a, an innocent being somewhere else the problems are big they are many they appear to be like not in a position to be solved but there is always a way you have to limit your resources usage of those resources we responsible responsible citizen of the planet tree plantation is one method and be a little considerate towards other species have a sense of responsibility and if that is done i think the true meaning the true theme of the chapter would be understood by everyone so it's not only about reading the chapter and answering the questions it is about understanding the theme 
and behaving likewise so with this i would like to close it for today in the next session i will start taking up the chapter the text so thanks a lot